from RF Smart. This is Taking Inventory, a podcast all about better controlling your supply chain and improving inventory management. And now, your host, Sarah Archer. Welcome to Taking Inventory with RF Smart. My name is Sarah Archer. I'm your host, and I have Stephen Lewis with me all the way from Australia. Today, as we're recording, it is International Podcast Day, and so we are doing an international podcast. Stephen is the Director of Operations for Australia and New Zealand, and we'll let him introduce himself here in just a moment, but he's here today to talk about uh, a kind of a spinoff of a video we did together a few weeks ago. If you haven't seen that, I'll make sure that it's linked for you to watch. But we talked a little bit about annual counting. And honestly, there was so much more that we could have talked about uh, just from our planning and from actually recording the video that we said, we got to do a podcast episode about this. And so Stephen has some amazing stories he's going to share with us about customers who are doing a great job and also maybe some times that he's seen people not do such a great job at counting. He's going to share those as well. Um, But Stephen, you know, being we're an international business and you're in Australia, different people call this process different things. And so we'll talk a little bit about all of all of that vocab here in a moment. But I was I was wondering if you would just kind of give our, give our listeners a little bit of background about you um, and, and your experience. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Sarah. So, um, hey, everybody. My name, as Sarah said, my name is Stephen Lewis and I am our director of operations for Asia Pacific. And. I've been working in the field of scanning and uh, data collection, as we used to call it, for businesses across sort of manufacturing, warehousing and retail for over 20 years now. We stopped counting at 20 years because it started to get a bit depressing when the number kept creeping up. So (laughs) (laughs) we're just going to go with over 20 years. And um, yeah, so that's sort of where my experience lies and, and across a very wide range of industries. So anything from food processing to you know, consumer electronics, um, yeah, there's no real sort of industry barriers. Pretty much everybody that has inventory in an area larger than a garage needs something to control it. And, um, yeah, I've been working in that field, as I say, for a long time. So, Stephen, we're we're talking about counting and annual counting, physical counting. There's, there's a lot of names for this. And like I was kind of alluding to before, depending on where you live, People sometimes call it different things. So I was wondering if as we get started here, if you could just kind of give us a refresh on what annual counting is and maybe even some other names that you might have heard it go by. Yeah, sure. So um, annual counting, also often called a full physical, a full physical stock take, a stock take, a wall to wall stock take. Um, I've heard it called lots of different things, but it's basically well, annual, so it's once it's a once a year count to verify that the stock levels you have in your ERP are actually correct. And, you know, to, to reconcile and manage any differences, any lost stock to perform and perform accounting transactions as a result of that if you have lost or found um, items. And the idea is to keep the, the, the value change to a minimum because otherwise um, it can have an impact on your business, obviously from a pure financial perspective, but also it can impact some other areas that I know we're going to talk about later, things like audit and other things like that. Um, So yeah, it's basically your big annual stock take. (laughs) So what, you know, what does this big annual stock take, what does it look like for customers? What are some of the things that they might, uh, they might prepare for what they might be doing? Sure. So a lot of that will depend on, um, the operation itself. So in terms of preparation, um, a lot of that will depend on how big the warehouse is, how quickly you can um, count those items. So if you look at something like, you know, if you're counting a smaller area, you might say, look, I can just get Sarah to do that. It'll take her about an hour and a half to count that row. We should be fine. But if you're talking about, you know, a, a you know tens of thousands of square feet or even hundreds of thousands of square feet of, of, of warehouse, then it, you're going to have to do a lot more planning than that. So you're going to need to know how long it's going to take to count a particular area, multiply that out, maybe add a bit of a factor there. Um, and different areas will take different amounts of time. So I think um, it's important to consider things like you know, mixed lots or mixed batches, serial numbers. Do you have what people normally call would like a block stack is, is a common name for it. 
So a really large bulk area with a lot of pallets in it, that's going to take much longer to count because you've got to sort of pull it apart. Um, so you need to spend a bit of time sort of figuring out how long that count's going to take. And that's a really important sort of part of the planning process. Um, and yeah, other factors also can be like, do you need specialized equipment? So if it's really high, do you need a high rise picker that someone can go up on and, and, um, and count? And I know you, you reference stories. So I have been on a high rise picker in a warehouse for um, an international sporting goods company that I won't name for reasons that are about to become obvious. <laughs> and uh, the warehouse worker that I was doing that count with had decided it was a good idea to override that high rise picker such that he did not have to lower it down to the ground to move it. So we were moving up and down the aisles like, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even, uh, probably a couple of stories up, we were moving <laughs> around through aisles, round quarters on a, on a, on a high rise picker. That, that was not fun. <laughs> that sounds yeah. very scary. <laughs> well, stuff like that though, it, it, you know, equipment like that may be required, right? So that's one of the reasons, one of the other things you need to, you need to plan for. Well, and sometimes too, right? You've got to, I mean, are you shutting down completely? Are you going to hire people in? How, you know, logistically, people-wise, um, how are you, mm. you know, going to do that count? I mean, I think yeah, that's something and, to consider too. Oh, absolutely. So, um, you know, some businesses will bring everybody in for the week. They'll shut the business down. They'll bring everyone in on the weekend, management included, and everybody counts, right? So it's not just the warehouse people. And that can have an impact on effectiveness and efficiency, right? Because if you've got someone that's not used to working in the warehouse, they're going to be slower to count, but also it's good to have lots of people there. And then um, on top of that, as you you mentioned, you know, do you need to shut down or don't you need to shut down? Um, and there's some, there's some questions around that that are more sort of RF smart specific, but it's basically, are you do you have true real-time imagery? Because if you do, you don't need to shut down. So if you are moving things around in real time as you move them, so if you're using something like RF Smart and you have things like um, real-time bin transfers when you're picking, then theoretically you can count without shutting down. And we do have customers that do that, and I have worked with people that do that. Um, there is an audit consideration for that, so you have to make sure you clear that with your with whoever is signing off on that count. Um, and I don't want to get, I guess, I don't want to get ahead of, <laughs> but while I think I've mentioned order a couple of times, so I should probably just mention a couple of things that, that would impact that. Um, yeah, of course. That's okay. Yeah. I do actually have a question for you, Stephen, as I'm thinking about sure. this. So, you know, some of our customers um, who are listening might be thinking, okay, well, I mean, we don't shut down. We are cycle counting. We don't need to do an annual count. Um, so I, my question kind of is, is, is why there are some customers who choose to to do an annual count. There are some customers who choose to shut down. Like, what are the circumstances that you might choose to do one of those things? Okay, so I've mentioned ordered a few times, so I'm going to expand on that. So <laughs> thanks for the thanks for the lead in. But um, look, definitely um, the type of product that you have will determine sometimes the type of count that you need to do. So there can be regulatory requirements in place. So if you've got you know, if you've got class one drugs or if you've got extremely high value items, there may be requirements that mean you have to count them annually as well as your, your stock takes. And also the type of company you are can have a pretty big impact on that. Listed versus privately held um, can definitely impact whether you actually need to do an annual count. But yeah, absolutely right. The, the end goal of, of automating counting is to get away from annual counts, go to a full cyclical count model. Um, and use something like RF Smart Cycle Counting or, you know, use RF Smart Cycle Counting to enable you to control the inventory such that you're confident with your inventory levels and you can also show a report saying, this item was counted four times this year, this is how accurate it was. And that will actually get you past audit in a lot of situations. But as I say, sometimes if you have, another example would be a bonded warehouse, which is a warehouse where some items have a different tax status, uh, very common in my um, geography for things like alcohol for cruise liners and things like that. So basically they haven't paid tax on that item. It sits in a bonded warehouse and therefore they have to control that inventory very carefully and it is subject to government order to make sure you're not taking items you haven't paid tax on and selling them domestically. That makes sense. And you mentioned cycle counting. Um, we've talked about it a couple of times now, and I just wanted to go ahead and say, um, you know, for this episode, we're really talking about 
annual counting. We know that some of you do that. You have to do it. It's a part of your system. And so if, you, but if you're listening and you're like, I don't know, I want to talk more about cycle counting. We do have an episode on that. It's the first episode. It's called what starts right stays right um, tips for counting. And so we kind of dive more into the, uh, the cycle counting stuff there and some tips and tricks for really accurate and good cycle counting. Um, and so, I, you know, kind of shifting and thinking about annual counts, because I know in North America, um, that's coming up quickly. Usually people do it at the end of the year. I know in Australia, you guys are it's typically mid-year, right? You're typically yeah, seeing seeing people count in the middle of the year. But it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't matter, no matter where you are. Um, you know, at some point you have to start preparing to do this annual count. And so what are the steps that you take that you could take to, uh, to be prepared to do an annual count? Okay, so we've already kind of covered off on the um, time piece, so like how, how to estimate the time piece. That's really important to know roughly how long that count's going to take given the resources that you have. And um, I'm sure most people on this podcast listening to this podcast don't need to be told that um you know take the time you think you need and then add like 20 percent, you know to make sure <laughs> you've got long enough to get the job done right because it's not always as quick or as easy as you think it's going to be um another thing you can do to prepare and i mean this is why you get those awesome um radio ads going sunday 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 is uh sell some stuff off right because the less stock you have to count the less you have to count the quicker the count process is so a lot of people will have some sort of sale or try and bring balances down and one of the big things I always tell people to aim for is don't just generally bring stock down. Look at the things that are hard to count. Block stacked lot items, for example, that I just mentioned before. Serialized items. Things that are really hard to count, you want to try and bring the balance of those down as far as possible. So that's another key preparation item. And the other thing is if you're going to divide the warehouse up amongst teams, get a warehouse map. And actually really intentionally like highlight the piece, give that to that team, you know, make sure that you've given them as much information as possible to eliminate questions on the day, because whoever's running this count is going to be a very busy person. And what you want to do is, is try and anticipate the questions people are going to ask, you know, maybe run it by uh, some really inexperienced people, you know, go to, go to a manager you're going to use as part of the account and say, if I tell you these pieces of information, if I give you this map, is this enough for you to go and do the count or are you going to have more questions, find out what those questions are. So an important part of preparation is understanding what information people will need to do the count and giving that to them. And as far as functionality goes, I'm just thinking like bin transfers. And and if you're using bin transfers um, and doing bin, can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. So, I mean, if I'm, I mentioned like real-time bin transfers earlier, is that kind of where you're going or are we just talking about like a general sort of bin transfer? Um, I was thinking real-time. Yeah, okay. So yeah. that mean, that that's a sort of a key decision maker around whether you need to shut down the business to do the count or not. So yeah, that's kind of, that's where that really comes into it. So if you are doing real-time bin transfers, then you don't, you can continue to operate and count. Now that will present its own preparation challenges, right? Because then you need to make sure you've got people that aren't your pickers. See, if you're gonna try and process orders and get them out the door while you're counting, you need to make sure you have separate staff to do that. And you also need to make sure that you're not, that physically it's gonna be possible. You know, if you have equipment that can only operate in a particular aisle and that's all that's allowed in there, like people can't just walk in there randomly because it's because they you've got some sort of what um, you know, guided by wire forklift type device people can't physically go in there. So if you're picking orders, they can't count at the same time. So that that will impact. So the sort of operating at the same time will impact um, your planning as well. And I, I think that that's a good, uh, a good segue to what I think is going to be my favorite part of this episode, which is where we talk about some things that you maybe haven't, you're not anticipating. So if you're listening, um, as I kind of alluded to before, Stephen has uh, done a lot of these. He's helped a lot of people. And so um, I, th I think that I can safely say you've kind of seen it all. Um, I don't know how many people can surprise you, but uh, you, you kind of already shared um, a little bit about, you know, your crazy story with that, um, that picking crane. But, you know, what are some unusual things um, that you might encounter as you prepare for these counts and that you need to take into account? Yeah, sure. So um, a big factor is going to be things like uh, refrigeration. So if you have freezer or protective areas that require protective gear, 
So um, there was a, a customer I worked with in a uh, country in New South Wales in Australia that gets really hot there. And so it was about um, about 42 degrees Celsius, which I think is somewhere around 105 um, Fahrenheit. Uh, but going in and out of the freezer, you were constantly take, putting on and taking off um, protective gear. And that was that was extremely challenging um, and also made it got, made it made, did, did make going in and out of, out of that area time consuming, which is something else to think about. Um, the other one would be um, dangerous goods. So I have actually um, worked at an area where they had a, a truck arrive, a, a courier truck arrive. The staff member went to the back of the truck, uh, rolled the back of the door up, looked inside the truck, closed the door, stepped away, told the driver to get out of the car and rang the fire department because they had um, corrosive and explosive uh, chemicals stored next to each other on a pallet. The carrier company had thoughtfully repacked the pallets to make things more efficient. Um, I don't think that particular carrier actually does dangerous goods anymore. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they kind of just closed it up, stepped away and said, we're calling the fire department and you're not going anywhere until this gets this all gets taken care of. So it is quite um, – it's quite critical to consider those sort of factors. I mean, obviously you can't consider a truck that's going to do that to your operation, but you do need to think about those types of goods when you're planning for account. And the other, um, the other one that, that springs to mind was um, a warehouse in Hong Kong. So that I visited that was essentially, I mean, for those of you that aren't familiar, I mean, the, the land prices in Hong Kong definitely have exceeded Manhattan or certainly rivaled Manhattan plenty of times. And so uh, land is very expensive on Hong Kong Island itself. So I went to a warehouse that was about 25 stories high, had a an outside track all the way around the outside that trucks would go up and down, and then just buildings in the middle that were that were ridiculously full. So we're talking stacked to the roof. Um, Wi-Fi coverage is extremely challenging. Getting a, even physically getting around was extremely challenging just because of how busy that building. You know, trucks constantly going up and down that outside rail, just really, really, really crazy. And um. I guess another another funny story that also links back to the subject is I went to uh, a customer that was processing animal vaccine and um, so they had live virus inside the facility. So there were a lot of, you had to wear a lot of protective gear. To get into that protective gear, you had to take off everything that you were wearing apart from your underwear. So I met this guy and three minutes later, he said, okay, strip down your underwear and put this protective gear on. I'm like, you just met. Is he going to buy me dinner or what? Anyway, stripped off. <laughs> uh, put, he's put this gear on. I'm like, yeah, good morning. And then um, headed into the facility. And um, but it does pose a lot of a lot of handling challenges. And anyone with that kind of business knows that they have to do a whole another set of planning, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you said vaccine, and it made me think like healthcare. Um, if you're counting in healthcare, there, are, you know, mm. you're going to need to do some some certifications and some different things um, in order to make sure that. I mean. Kind of like you said before with that chemical story, mm. you know, you can't have certain things next to each other or, you know, people need to be very aware of the things that they're doing. And so if you're hiring staff in, um, they really, you know, have to be on top of their game. Oh, absolutely. And healthcare is another area that also has a lot of audit requirements. So thank you for bringing that up. I mean, in the US, it's the FDA. In Australia, it's the TGA. You know, everyone has their equivalent uh, government, essentially government or semi-government department that's responsible for auditing that kind of company. So that's a whole nother level of, of audit that's required and, and can push you down a, an annual an annual count path regardless of how good your cycle counting is. So what I'm, what I'm thinking and what I'm hearing is, you know, as you're preparing and you're thinking through, you know, what are, what are the things that I need to do? There are some obvious things, right? There's, you know, making sure that things are clean, putting things potentially on sale and clearing out some inventory, but then there might be some kind of crazy things that you don't think about. What kind of equipment do you need? So you made a really good point earlier with that picker. Um, you know, some, I know that you and I have talked about some customers choose to rent equipment or bring equipment in so that they don't have to, um, bring inventory to them. They can go to the inventory. Um, and then, you know, sometimes they zoom around corners and do crazy things, <laughs> but, um, you know, I think that, the, you know, what additional equipment do you need is a really good point. Um, are you going to be 
handling um, something potentially dangerous that would require more training? Are you going to be audited? Do you need to make sure that the things that you're doing and the people that are coming into account have the correct certifications? Are you going to have to put on and off, a, you know, protective gear every single time you walk in? And especially, you know, in healthcare or even just um, with the way that the world is you know, in 2020 and people are, you know, putting on masks and PPE and making sure that everybody is socially distanced. Like those are considerations that people probably haven't had to think of before this year. I know you're absolutely right. I mean, if you look at something like a meat processing plant, for example, I mean, there's a huge um, amount of process that they need now that they didn't need before. You know, they all need to be wearing PPE. You know, it's really important that they're doing that. Um, and it, they all need to be keeping um, socially distanced or physically distanced, depending on what country you're in and what terminology you're using. And that and that's likely to be the case for a long time. So I think that, yeah, some of those places that are more sort of high risk in 2020 do need to be considered. That's a really good point. So as we kind of uh, kind of bring it home for today. I want to talk about a couple a couple more things. I want to talk about the way RF Smart supports counting. Um, so if you're listening and you're thinking, okay, so how do I do this? How can I do this with RF Smart? I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, Stephen, can you walk us through how our, our customers are being supported by RF Smart? Yeah, sure. So, um, so for our NetSuite product, you know, there's really, there's a key decision you need to make. Is this count going to be directed or is this count going to be non-directed? Now, with an annual count, a lot of time it will be non-directed. So the operator will be walking through an aisle and counting everything they see. They won't be told what to count. They will be choosing what to count based on what's in front of them. The other thing to think about is, do I want one big count for my whole warehouse? That is much easier to reconcile because if you think about it, if something's missing from one part of the warehouse, but it's actually been moved somewhere else, if they're two separate counts, you're going to have two separate accounting transactions. You can have a write down and a write up. Whereas if they're in the same count, they will cancel each other out and you may not end up with that. You won't end up with the same financial impact. You'll still write it off and up, but it'll be a zero um, financial impact. Whereas the other one will have two counts with two different financial impacts. Um, and so a small count is obviously much easier to approve and go through, right? Because it's shorter. But then you've got to try and reconcile the counts against each other. You know, one might have a minus and one might have a plus. So your final number, you need to sort of add them all together. Not a big deal but can, and can be done, but just things to think about. Um, and if you are going to shut down to count, a big count obviously means you're going to need to shut down for longer because you're going to need to wait until that reconciliation process is complete before you can start back up. But RF Smart provides both of those types of counts. You can create them in advance and then execute them on the handheld device. And that whole process of counting everything you see is much easier when you can just go scan, 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 enter quantity and continue on. Um, and also RF Smart's counting supports you on the approval side by allowing you to selectively approve lines by things like just by value. So I might say, look, everything under 10 bucks, just approve it. I want to get it out of the way. I want to focus on my high value um, lines that I need to review. Then you could send those high value lines out for, for recounting. All those kinds of processes are all available um, in RF Smart. Yeah. And if you're listening today and you're like, okay, but how? Uh, make sure that you get in touch with your account executive um, and they can hook you up and let and you know help you with some of those processes. We also have some other resources available on our website, our YouTube channel, so make sure that you're checking those out as well. Um, you know, before we wrap up today, Stephen, I I, I want to talk about, you know, we've talked about a couple of tips, you know, clean things up, um, you know, reducing confusion, reducing stock levels, but do you have any final tips or stories, anything that you want to share before we end for today? Um, so definitely clean things up, reducing stock level. And the other one is um, if you are going to shut down account, make sure you allow enough time. And also, um, if you think about it, doing it by bringing a lot of people in, um, make sure you have enough devices <laughs> and licenses because sometimes people bring people in account and then realize they don't have enough devices to go around and that gets messy too. Oh, good point. Oh, man. Yeah, definitely make sure that you've got the the right amount of equipment. That's, uh, that's something that... I bet a lot of people probably miss. So very good mm -hmm. point there, Stephen. All right. Well, uh, any any last minute, anything else you want to say? 
Hey, I was just going to add a shout out to one more of our resources. So the okay. Arm Smart Online Help for NetSuite has an indexed webinar on stock counting, which I think is really awesome. So you, there might be a one-hour webinar there and you say, I don't want to go through the whole thing, but it's indexed. So you, it's got a part about creating a non-directed count. You click on that, it takes you straight to that point in the count. So that's one other resource if, that if I'm an RS Smart customer, I'd want to know about. Oh, yeah, for sure. We'll make sure that that's linked for you guys so that you have um, access to that as well. Uh, well, Stephen, thank you so much for joining us. This has been really fun. Um, and for those of you listening, thank you for listening. Make sure that you subscribe so that you know when new episodes are available. You can subscribe in any place that you listen to a podcast and also on our YouTube channel. So um, I guess the takeaway for today is, um, you know, making sure that you are thinking through all of these considerations. Your next step uh, is to go and listen to that webinar if you need some more information. And then of course, get in touch with us and let us know how we can best assist you. So you can do that by contacting your account executive or by emailing us at info at rfsmart.com. Stephen, thanks again. And to those of you listening, thanks. We'll see you again real soon. Thanks, Sarah. Bye.